The Fearless Vampire Killers, also known as Dance of the Vampires and Pardon Me But Your Teeth Are In My Neck, is a vampire comedy directed by Roman Polanski. Two vampire hunters visit a small tavern. One of the vampire hunters falls in love with the daughter of the tavern's keeper. She gets abducted by a vampire, and the two vampire hunters must find out where she went. The film was written and directed by Roman Polanski and stars Polanski, Sharon Tate, and Jack McGowan. Howdy ho folks, welcome back to Garage Vampirethon where every day for the month of October we look at a vampire movie. Today we're talking about the Roman Polanski film, The Fearless Vampire Killers. And just talking about the title, if you uh, notice the intro, there's a lot of titles to this movie. Polanski wanted to call it Dance of the Vampires because it was loosely based off that novel. But the studio wanted the fearless vampire killers and ultimately the studio got their way. This is the first time I'm talking about a Roman Polanski film on my channel and I feel like it's kind of impossible to talk about Roman Polanski without talking about the controversies that surrounded Roman Polanski. I like a number of Polanski's movies, Rosemary's Baby, Chinatown, even Carnage which he made more recently. Repulsion is another great one. When it comes to someone behind the camera, I'm able to compartmentalize the art and the artist. When it comes to in front of the camera, I usually have a bit more difficulty, but I'm usually able to do it regardless. There is something tragic in watching this movie because it's obviously Sharon Tate doing what Sharon Tate was great at, and it was just being that ditzy, lovable character, and that's what she does in this movie. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all, not at all. I... I just don't know what to do with myself. I get so bored. You can't imagine how bored I get. Don't know, I'm just not used to being locked up the whole time. And seeing Polanski in this, there's something very tragic to watching this movie in retrospect. Now, I'm gonna take the my knowledge of the Manson family murders and how Roman Polanski ended up becoming a horrible human being. I'm gonna put that to the side and just worry about the movie for now because film is a collaborative process and there's a ton of hardworking people on this set. So the movie opens, you get the MGM logo, roar, and then it fades to this cartoony vampire. And then you have this very cheerful, playful, cheesy, aesthetic of the film which kind of feels like this movie's title cards and cartoons were drawn by a two-year-old in the best way possible it has a very simplistic feel to it <laughs> And when it comes to the tone of this film, I could compare the tone of this film to something like a Ghostbusters, where it's a very humorous movie, but the stakes are still there, the horror elements are still scary. When you're first introduced to the vampire, he's very terrifying looking. <laughs> kind of acts a lot like the Christopher Lee Dracula. So it, it's a comedy, but I will not say that it's void of scares. The scares are still present in this movie. Now the humor though is very slapsticky, which Polanski is mostly known for his horror movies. Like I said, Repulsion and Rosemary's Baby are some of his most known movies. And then his dramas like Chinatown. It's hard to imagine Polanski not only directing, but acting as well in this very cartoony, ghostbustery movie. The humor itself feels a lot like Abbott and Costello, or almost like Scooby-Doo at a certain moment. There's one moment in here that especially reminded me of Scooby-Doo, where the vampire frightens 
Roman Polanski's character, and Polanski just runs away and ends up going full circle. <laughs> Other than that, there's these great little moments. There's a moment involving wine barrels that made me laugh that was very reminiscent of something like the Three Stooges. The cartoony horniness of Roman Polanski's character. Whenever he sees a pair of jugs, he's like, oh, can I touch the... And they take these very classic slapstick moments and repurpose it for this film. The classic, I have the strange feeling we're being watched, vampires right behind them. That's in the movie. The one part that really made me laugh, and I think the best performance in here is actually Jack McGowan. He kind of steals this show. The whole dynamic between uh, McGowan and Polanski kind of reminded me of Doc Brown and Marty McFly. They have that same kind of chemistry. McFly is kind of this wide-eyed kind of newbie versus McGowan in this movie. He's kind of like the clumsy, klutzy scientist. But there's one part where McGowan made me die of laughter and that's when he trips on his own suitcase. My library. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. I don't know why that made me laugh. The, just the timing of it was perfect. But like I said, there's all these slapsticky elements to the movie, but the stakes are still present. This is still a pretty scary movie. And especially when it comes to that great ballroom sequence at the end of the movie, the production value feels so elevated in this movie. Everyone has beautiful costumes, the dance choreography is on point, and it really shows why Polanski wanted to call this movie Dance of the Vampires is because that dance sequence is very beautiful. And it gets topped off by this very comedic moment where our three protagonists, Sharon Tate, Roman Polanski, and Jack McGowan, they're in front of a mirror and what they think is a room full of vampires, but when they look in the mirror, they're the only ones in the mirror. <laughs> And then, obviously, hilarity ensues when all the vampires find out that they're not actually vampires. So, I think that that's what really works in this movie, is this balance between comedy and horror. I think what really harms this movie, though, it's its pacing. I think this movie has really bad pacing issues. There's even a point in the movie where I think Polanski was getting bored from his own movie, so he just speeds up the footage. Brian, give me a hand. Put the wood under the can. And it's not in a way like Nosferatu. We talked about the silent film Nosferatu where they speed up the footage to make Nosferatu look a little like scarier and have super speed. It's not like a narrative thing like that. It's like, okay, this scene is taking too long. Let's just fucking speed up the footage. Put it on times two. And it really feels jarring when that happens in the movie. Overall, I appreciated this movie. It's got its moments. By no means is it the best Polanski movie. If, if you don't know Polanski, go watch The Pianist or go watch Rosemary's Baby or Repulsion. Those are much better movies. This is the movie in which uh, Polanski was introduced to Sharon Tate. Apparently, the casting director brought Tate for an audition and Polanski really liked her and ended up marrying her and she ended up getting murdered by the Manson family. So it's a bit of like an origin story, this movie. That said, it's a little tidbit of history. I don't think the film ages all that well. 
Watch it if you're interested. Skip on it if you're not interested. So that's the Fearless Vampire Killers. Guys, have you seen this movie? What's your favorite Polanski movie? Comment below, let me know. Keep it respectful, guys. Uh, if someone says they like Roman Polanski, don't just assume that they support statutory rape. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for more Garage Vampire Thon. Take care, folks. Oh.